You're having trouble connecting with your brother who is in prison for murder. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's right. He tried to get help right before it. He was like reaching out to me. He was like, could you get me into rehab? And I was like working a job where I had to travel a lot. I couldn't really help him at the time. And I really wanted to. And then uh, I guess he stabbed someone and they died when he was like strung out. And uh, he calls me and I just, it gives me so much anxiety and stuff because like, I just don't know what to say to him. Let's talk to Jalen. Hello, Jalen. Hey, what's up? How are you doing, Jalen? I'm doing pretty good. How are you, Gek? Uh, I'm doing good. Jalen, it says you're 25 years old from Oklahoma. It says that uh, you're having trouble connecting with your brother who is in prison for murder. Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, tell me tell me what's going on here. Uh, okay, well, um, uh, my family has a pretty long history with, like, uh, mental health issues and drug use, which is pretty common for, like, Native American communities. And, uh, my brother, he's been, he got diagnosed with schizophrenia when he was, like, in high school. And, then, like, after high school, he kind of, like, started doing, like, hard drugs with, like, our dad and stuff. And, uh, yeah, he, he tried to get help right before it. He was, like, reaching out to me. He's like, hey, like, I don't really like doing this stuff with our dad. I, could you get me into rehab? And I was, like, working a job where I had to travel a lot. I couldn't really help him at the time, and I really wanted to. And then uh, I guess he stabbed someone, and they died when he was, like, strung out. And uh, he's been... And since we're Native American, like, in Oklahoma, like, uh, the state can't prosecute us if, like, for, like, serious crimes committed on, nat on like, Native land. And so the state of Oklahoma couldn't prosecute him. So he was, like, in Tulsa County for, like, a year. And then he got transferred to, like, a federal prison in Miami for, like, another year. And uh, like he hasn't even had, like, one, like, arraignment or anything. It's, like, they like, throw you around, like... If you're an Indian in Oklahoma, you do stuff like serious, serious crimes. And he just got uh, declared mentally insane, which, like, we were trying to tell them the whole time. He was just getting thrown around by the court system. And he got declared men mentally insane, and now he's back in Oklahoma. And he's at, like, this mental hospital. And he's, like, I've been kind of in contact with him because it's been three years. So it's been, yeah, this happened, like, in 2019. And, uh, like, right before COVID. So, like, COVID just threw a whole lot more problems with his court situation. And then, so like three years deep in all this, and he still hasn't really gotten far in this process. Probably got like another two years to go with his trial, if he even goes to trial. But he calls me all the time, and I just, I ran out of stuff to say to him about, I don't know, it's been like six months, and like I'm not really ignoring his calls, because I'm in college. I go to this tribal college in Kansas, and uh, he calls me, and I just, it gives me so much anxiety and stuff because, like, I just don't know what to say to him. He just, because I, I just feel like when I'm talking to him, like, bragging about, like, how good I'm doing. Cause, like, like I said, our family's had, like, huge issues. And I'm, like, the first one to go to college. And I'm kicking ass, like, getting good grades. And when he calls and asks me about that stuff and I tell him that, I just feel so bad because he's missing out. Because mm -hmm. he was, like, I don't know. He was, like, the most athletic. He was a national champion wrestler when he was, like, in elementary. Like, he was super athletic, and uh, he just, I don't know, drugs and his mental health just ruined his life. And I don't know, it's just hard talking to him because I don't know what to say to him anymore. Mm -hmm. Sorry to spill that on you, Gek. I just, no, I, I don't know. Uh, like... uh, no, I, I mean, it sounds like you're very, like, connected with him and his situation. I mean, for you to be able to give me all of the information that you you just gave you have to have you know you, you have to be actively giving a shit about your brother and following his situation because a lot of the people you know they could just be like oh well you know he went away from murder i'm gonna go and live my life and you know not even you know pay, pay attention to the details of of his case and what's going on with him which obviously you're not doing because you sound very well informed about his life and about uh you know, it's all the sort of proceedings going around his case and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, I guess, yeah. It's pretty reassuring. 
Uh, um, we're, we're, we're really close. I'll go yeah, on. how would you describe your relationship with your brother? Well, like, uh, I'm barely, like, a year older than him. And, like, we I have, like, five brothers, and we all look just like my dad. But me and him look, like, the most like our dad. And, like, we look like twins. And that's, like, everyone, like, ask us if we're twins growing up. And we're super close. And, I don't know, we have different moms. And, we ne like, we grew up together, but we never, like, lived with each other. And, uh, I don't know, I just feel bad, like, how I turned. Because, like, we're pretty much, like, the same person. Like, you look at us, it's, yeah, like, right. like I said, but for the twins and it's just like we had just like our lives turned out so differently i'm just I, I feel bad like that i'm doing good you know you know what i'm saying because i'm like no, of course he deserves a chance he deserved a chance too like and like y'all know and our dad's even doing better now he's like he's lived his whole life around drugs and when that when when my brother killed that guy like it kind of snapped our dad out of it and he's doing a lot better and he's got like a wife and like he's raising our my other little brother with her and and it's just like it makes me mad because i'm like that's not fair like you're old you lived your whole life like just doing drugs and just being an idiot and my brother's like he was like 20 tw 20 when did that happen and now he's like 20 24 almost and uh it's like that's not fair at all man are you and, yeah, the <laughs> the primary like would you would you say that you or your brother's primary support system because it sounds like you have a big family you have all these other brothers uh i don't know if you mentioned what's up with uh your mom but like do do any of them keep uh close contact with your brother no that's the thing i really am like I'm, my dad mm. does he does but like but like his mom that's what i'm saying like my mom was like a like a christian lady like kind of was like strict and his mom was like a drug addict so and and you know what i'm saying what about like, your other what, what about your other brothers? Do none of them keep contact with him? Oh, well, my, the, well, my dad, here's the thing. My dad, he's like both a Native American and like they're kind of infamous for having lots of children. And he's got a, like six kids with like seven different baby mamas. Oh, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> it's a, and they're all like spread apart. Like I have like, I'm 16 years older than like my youngest brother and like, like 12 years younger than my oldest brother if i said that right sorry i'm a little high but but uh okay, yeah so are you uh, so are you even close with your other brothers uh, i am but my oldest brother he's like same route he's he's like on drugs and in and out of jail but like mm -hmm. he's not mentally i mean he probably does have mental health but he's not like mentally insane like it's crazy like talking like the last time i saw my brother we went to like this sacred site in like southwest oklahoma uh like sacred to our tribe and i took him there and it was like so it was like really special moment in our life and then like the next time i saw him he was like on drugs and it was like talking to like an insane person and hmm. and uh so yeah he, he he shouldn't have been in that like the jail system for as long as he was like it, it took three years for them to like for him to see like a psych like a psychiatrist or whatever and then for them to be like all right like he he needs to be like in a I wouldn't say an asylum, but like a mental health facility rather than like a normal jail. So the the, the reason I was asking about like the rest of your family and stuff is because like you're clearly having a, a a tough time dealing with this situation. And I'm wondering, like, are you are you dealing with all of these thoughts and feelings like alone? Like, do you have like any any of your brothers or anyone else in your family who's like close to the situation? that you can talk um, about this stuff my, with my dad we like we talk about it, like I said, he, he is doing better but like he was never like in any of our lives but but like i don't know he's starting to do better and we do talk about it but it's not like i don't know it's not really like intimate or deep conversations yeah but uh, yeah I, I am that's like, pretty much why i called you get because i am kind of like dealing with, uh, with this alone it's freaking hard <laughs> I feel like, I mean, look, you clearly, you clearly care about your brother. You clearly have empathy for him. You sound like you're trying as hard as you can. Uh, and uh, everybody has their limits, you know. Exactly. And I'm at mine, kind of. And it, it sucks because I'm like, you shouldn't, I shouldn't. I feel bad for, like, not trying to move on, but, like, not trying to be so centered around it, you know? 
Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, well, we both agree here right now. I mean, you you are trying your best, but as as we both agreed on, everyone has their limits and you sound like you've exhausted yours. Yes. And I'm like, that's what I'm saying. I, I don't know. My professional opinion, but like an outside, like, cause I can't just bring this up like casual conversation with my friends, you know, just like, Hey, like my brother stabbed someone and I need help with it. <laughs> so, uh, mm. uh, I don't know, I'm like, man, should I just not forget about him, but, like, stop answering well, his calls? Like, what should I... Well, okay, so so how frequent are his calls? I'm sorry, what about you once a week. About once a week. About once a week, okay. Um, are you... What, what, what do you want? Are you trying to make those calls, like less frequent but still have them are you trying to get yourself to move on completely what what would be sort of an ideal outcome for you not completely i just like i would like to see him again and like I, yeah. that's what i'd rather do i'd rather like, go visit him once a month like in person but covid you know is got restraints especially like in indian country but uh yeah that's what i would like to do rather than just you know answer his calls and try to like fill in him in on like my daily life because I guess I'm doing pretty good with myself. I got, I okay, so you so say that you have a lot of guilt about you doing good and your brother doing bad because you guys came from the same place and you have all these feelings of like, man, it's not fair that my brother had to deal with all this, you know, uh, mental health stuff when I got off good. My dad, you know, did all this shit, but he was able to turn his shit around, but my brother won't get to turn his shit around. And that, and that's kind of eating at you a little bit. Yeah. Cause he probably won't like he, he's, he's schizo. Like there's not really like if anything that, that gets worse over time. What? Uh, okay. So you're talking about how well your life is going. What is, what's going well in your life? What are you like in school? Are you, what's, what's, yeah, like I'm uh, in school. we're going to school. Like, I don't know. I didn't have a car for the longest time. I finally got a car and my license. And I know I'm in school, like, making new friends. And uh, it's just, I don't know, like, I moved to, like, uh, a different state and stuff. and Pretty kick-ass. And, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'll be having a good day. Like, and then I get that call. And I'm like, oh, shit, now I got to. I don't want to say brag. Because, like, he, he says he likes hearing it. Like, he's like, I don't want you to fill me in. But, like, what I'm, like, saying, I'm like, fuck, man. Like, he should be out here, like. He should have got the chance to, like, you know, turn his life around. Not just, I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to like defend him because, like, he like a human life was taken. So it's like it's not sure. like he was innocent. Of, of course, cause someone died. <laughs> um. Do, so, so do you believe him when he says uh, when he says that he he really genuinely does want to hear about your life and how well things are going? Do you do you just not believe him? No, because he he'll get mad and he'll be like, man, like, I should be out there. Like, what the fuck? Like, what did I do? Like, this sucks. Mm. 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 Yeah, oh, yeah, it does suck, man. Like, he's like, think of it. Because he's, I don't know, he, you can tell he's not, like, all there anymore. Like, it's just like he repeats the same questions and it's just like, how do I answer these? I'm trying to think about this from, like, a framework of, like, what is and isn't in your control. You know, and a lot of this shit of like, you know, oh, li life isn't fair because this happened to these people and this happened to me and, and, you know, reckoning with that. A lot of it is just like out of your control, you know, like you, you obviously have no, you you obviously couldn't control the brother, the, the actions of your brother and you can't control what happens to your dad. Um, So I'm kind of just thinking about like, all right, what? What is left in your control? Because you, you can't get your brother out of jail. You can't make your brother not schizophrenic. You can't... You know, I'm trying to think. Like, what... Well, I mean, the, 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 the things that are in your control is like... Well, what can you do... Oh, okay, what are you, what are you, what are you studying in college? What are you hoping to do with um, your, your future and whatnot? Uh, I want to do, like, social work. Like get like a, become like a clinical, a licensed clinical social worker, and then okay, like work in for my, and work for my tribe and like help people get off drugs and like help aid them in their fight with their mental illness. You know, kind of like what you do, but like 
certified. <laughs> okay, so um, I mean that's perfect because what I was going to say is uh, you have no control over uh, what your brother's mental health, your brother's actions, any of that stuff. But I mean, you don't even need me to tell you all this shit because it sounds like you're already doing it. You have control over like what you put effort into moving forward. And uh, I'm jazzed to hear that you want to get into social work and stuff because you 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 can you can sort of take all these feelings of of frustration that you have about the the decisions that your brother made and uh, the decisions that your dad made, and you can instead of just like having to like b- bask in them against this unmovable wall. Of, of circumstances you can kind of transmute them into like you know something something productive which is you going out and helping these people uh you know not end up like like your brother you know so uh i mean it sounds like you're doing the right thing you're taking these these feelings of frustration and you're applying them toward uh the greater good which you know is in your control to uh uh affect if that makes any sense no yeah like i think i i are pretty good at this though because because you pretty much described that like just that unmovable wall and like and, and i don't know because like i said i'm doing pretty good it's not so much i need help with anything in particular it's just like i don't know i just I need to get it out because I feel a lot of guilt. Totally. And I, you're right. Like, I am like working towards like helping people. And like I have like two little brothers. I was saying and I'm like exactly like 16 years older than them, and I don't want them to like you know turn out like their their other right. two older brothers and right. their dads. So like that's, that's those are like some main reasons why I'm doing what I do because I want to help not just them but anyone else that's going through what my brother and other people go through. Right. Right, and so, you know, when you're having these frust- when you're having these frustrations of like, ah, fuck, it's not fair that 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 you know, uh, uh, my brother made these decisions and he's in the situation, and you're just thinking about how it's fucked up, and and you know, th- there's there's like a there's like a hopelessness in that line of thinking and a powerlessness in that line of thinking. Yeah. I don't know if you, I don't know, if, I don't know if that resonates with you. No, it does for sure. That's exactly yeah, yeah. It's like damn. But but, just, but you're nothing. but when you when you uh you know do these things like you're gonna go uh be a social worker and help the people in your tribe, you're taking the power back. You're going okay. I can't uh uh, uh I, I cannot control what has happened, but I can help these younger people in my tribe, and I can sort of see my brother in them a little bit and go, you, I'm gonna help. You, I'm going to do what I can because, you know, what's happened to the past to my brother has, has already happened. But these these kids, I can transmute this energy into uh, uh, helping them. And, and, and hopefully that'll make you feel a little bit less hopeless and, and powerless. Oh, if you can actually fuck do yeah, okay, good. Oh, yeah, okay. Like hearing, hearing this out loud, just like. See, I, I've been trying to get to therapy, but, like, I don't know. I don't have health insurance except through, like, Indian health services. And, like, the best I can get is, like, social workers. And I kind of hate that I'm hating on them because that's, like, what I want to be. But, like, I want someone that's, like, a specialist in, like, anxiety and, you know, certain, like, what I'm going through rather than just, like, a generic mm-hmm. social worker. But, anyways, like, it's cool just what, hearing what, it out loud. Like, yeah. So this is, I mean, so this is another thing, right? Like, so you're going to these social workers and you're like, fuck these guys, they suck. You take, take that too. You're like, ah, oh, fuck these guys, they suck. I'll do it better. Yay, exactly. That's what I want to do you. Yeah, yeah. Cause, uh, nothing against my, my, the, the like the tribal social workers I have access to. It's just, they specialize like in trauma and like, uh, I think one is like gender identity and like addiction, which is like, those are valid. Like, hell yeah. It's just, I don't, I don't know. I feel like. I want someone like a therapist that specializes in anxiety, you know, mm-hmm. rather than uh, someone that's, I don't know. Either way, um, thank you for, for that. Yeah, yeah, really insightful. Of course, man. Is um, is there anything that you want to say to the people of the computer before we go, Jalen? No. Well, I do have one more question for you. I'll make it real short. I'm sorry. Hit me. Okay. Uh, like I said, I'm trying to become a social worker and I need a. Internships, you think uh, 
think uh, it would be like a therapy gecko intern, like special. We could get, get, get put together or something. See, I feel like um, uh, you interning for me would not translate in any way, shape, or form to any sort of professional um, <laughs> healthcare environment. So I'll turn this. I'll, I will. T- I will have to shoot you down o- for your own good. Well, when are you going to get certified? Oh, never. I, I don't think I could be an actual therapist. I think that would uh, that'd be too hard. You're pretty damn because- good at it. Well, I appreciate that, but here's the thing is right after you, I'm going to take a call from somebody about shitting their pants or getting chlamydia. <laughs> and, um, you know, we're going to kind of we're going to kind of uh, 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 ride the wave up and down. I don't know if I could ride uh, the wave of, of primarily serious calls uh, the entire time. But I do appreciate all the kind words that you've said, Jalen. I appreciate you sharing your story with us. And um, fuck, man, I wish you good luck. And uh you know, I think you're gonna kill it. You obviously some of you care a lot about people, and uh, you know, obviously the world needs more of that. So, Thanks, kudos to you, man. Mado, you have a great day, Jake. Hey, you too, Jalen. Take care. Bye. Hello. Hey, what's up? Hey, this is Braden from Ohio. My name's Brandon. Oh, well, it says here your name is Braden. You're good, though. Yeah, it's close enough. You go with whatever you feel like, though. Oh, I, I always go with what it says here. Yeah, what's up? Because, listen, okay, I, I just want to explain this to you. I read this computer all the time. Oh, no, I understand. Yeah. So, I, and I, so I, ha- I, I know that the subject of your name, theoretically, would be something that you know more than the computer about. But I have to balance that with the fact that I just, in general, about all matters, trust the computer more than you. Let's go with Braden, bro. Even if with. you theoretically would be more knowledgeable about the subject, I still don't trust you as much as my computer. And that is 100% acceptable. Braden, it says you're 19 years old from Ohio. Good for you. You am. had um, testicular torsion surgery. Uh, yeah. And you wanted to discuss what it's like to have your testicles operated on. Um, no, yeah. I just thought it was an interesting matter that you probably haven't had much information about. I, I'm very lucky to have very little information about this. Um and, you know, I, th- I think it would be helpful to know what it is like so that we may live vicari- vicariously from you and uh, take better care of our testicles moving forward. How did you, yeah. uh, how did you first uh, tort your testicles? That's the funny part. I fell asleep. It was on February 8th. And I woke up on February 9th and everything felt all right, but a little off. And I went to go take a shower and uh, saw things weren't quite the same down there. To put it lightly. And we, Okay, well, hold on. Like, when you oh. say things weren't quite the same, are we like... when? Okay, when people say testicular okay. torsion, I imagine that your balls are doing like a... Um, what's the name of that fucking movie? The hour, they're doing like an exorcist thing where they've spun 360 <laughs> degrees all around. That's what I'm assuming testicular torsion yeah. looks like. Is that accurate? I mean, you're somewhat right, somewhat wrong. So, you know how they're supposed to sit there? It was at like, let's say, almost a 45 degree angle. The left one was a 45 degree angle to the right. And the left so one was, was a like 45 over degree. top of the right so it was like sitting on top of the right one, like an axe almost. Okay, so your balls were tandem. Yeah, they were like, the way the doctor explained it to me is like, the cords got like tangled somehow while I was sleeping. Man, the human body is really it, like stupid. Because the fact that you can just... It really is. It blew my mind. Yeah, I mean, the fact that you can just be going about... I mean, you're 19 years old, you've been sleeping every single day for 19 years and then all of a sudden you have a day 
where you do it wrong and it just f fucks up your testicles. That's so crazy to me. Yeah, man. The worst part about all of it is I found out, so it happened when I was 17. So I found out I needed surgery on my 17th birthday. Hmm. And, um, so, yeah. Well, I guess when you woke up, did it, did it hurt? No, when I woke up, I didn't like feel anything was too off until like maybe 20, 25 minutes later when I got in the shower in the morning. Thank God I took a shower that early. Because the doctor said if you don't catch it within 24 hours, they have to actually cut out a testicle because you lose ah. blood flow. Ugh. So in order to save the other testicle, they would have to cut out one of them. But thank God that none of that happened to happen. I just went in, and by the time I got there, I kind of situated them back myself. Yeah. And they said, like, yeah, definitely, like, you have signs of what happened. And I went in the next Wait, you day Okay, birthday, so you situated them back yourself, surgery. right? So, okay, so, you, so yeah. your balls were tandem. And then you were down there doing your own little surgery, and did, did it correct yeah, them at all, or like when like you tried to move them, did it? I was just kind of, like, yeah, you just I was just kind of like cupping them, kind of, so they didn't like yeah. get messed up or whatever. Just kind of like feeling around for what was happening because I didn't quite understand. I was still in shock. So on the way there, I must have situated them back into place. Hmm. But they said either way, they had to go in and quote unquote tag them down in surgery. So it didn't happen again. Mm. And um, did the doctor give any more insight into how exactly they got contorted? Was it like you were just like rubbing your thighs together in some weird way? I mean, I, I can't get over the fact that you've been sleeping for 17 years and then just you, how the fuck just one night you, you position your body in a weird way. Like, did they explain any of that? Yeah, not to scare anybody in chat or you, but um, they said the three most common ways is through physical contact in a sport, like if you get hit or something, mm. through sexual activities if you're you know going too hard, or in sleep. It, it, the third most common way of for it to happen is in sleep. You just you know roll over or do something wrong, and they just don't move like they're supposed to. And one comes free, and that's why they had to do surgery was to kind of make it so when they move, they move together. Man, it is uh, good to have a reminder every now and then of just how fragile and stupid our bodies are. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, so it also says here that your girlfriend at the time broke up with you because Yeah, I actually find it really funny now. Please, please tell us what happened. I find it, I mean, at the, at the time it was, you know, heartbreaking, but now I find it really, really funny because when I first had it, like I had to go to the emergency room immediately, didn't know what was happening, didn't know, you know, I, I was thinking the worst of the worst, like they were just going to have to cut them out as soon as I got there or something. So when I got home, my girlfriend of two years was actually staying here because of, you know, stuff with her mom or whatever. She had her own room and... She she was like, what happened? I told her all about it. I was like, yeah, for minimum, I can't have sex until the surgery, which they didn't plan until a month pro like from the date. So I had to wait a month, and then on top of that, another month. So two months, I couldn't have sex. And she straight up started like crying. I was like, it's really not that big of a deal. Like, yada, yada. I didn't think it was a big deal, but apparently she found it was, like, the biggest deal. And, like, we didn't break up immediately after that, but, like, that definitely had one of the bigger roles to play into us breaking up. Wait a minute. So this girl, uh, at the time, uh, had whatever was going on in her family life, and so she had her own room in your house? Yeah, my mom, it wasn't, like, anything. Yeah, she had her own room. We have, like, a bigger house. My sister moved out recently. Damn. Okay, so you we had two extra really rooms. like your whole family. You really took this this girl in. Yeah, I was there. I was with her for two years up to that point, from freshman and, summer up until throughout high school. Okay, so you you took her in. How long was she staying with you guys uh, up until you guys broke up? Um, roughly three to five months. Mm. Well, did did she stick around after you guys broke up? 
Um, we funny thing is we talked for probably about two or three weeks after we broke up. We maybe went out to get coffee or something like once or twice. And then she went to Florida to go visit one of her friends and she just completely like cut me off, like blocked me on Snapchat and shit. She didn't say anything to me. Like she didn't say like this is why, like I can't do this anymore. I I don't want to be friends anymore. She just cut me off completely. Man, that's fucking cold that she would do that after you guys took her in. Yeah. I mean, I figure everyone's got their own way. She was raised differently than other people. You know, I'm not going to hold it against her morally. I get this sense from you that having your testicles operated on have, has, like, made you calmer. Has made you a, uh, a more stoic uh, 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 thinker, feeler. I feel like you had your balls. I mean, I feel like I feel like I'm a, I matured a lot and like mature. That's I think I matured a lot in eighth grade. I feel like I matured a lot in eighth grade because um, some some of the people I was closer with used to smoke a lot of weed, and um, someone I was close with died in a car crash when she was 19. So I just started smoking with them, and it just kind of like I was hanging out with the older group of people. And it kind of like put me into a deeper mindset of thinking deeper into things instead of taking them for what they are on surface. Ah, okay. So you were you were getting high with uh, uh, older people. All right, so you're getting high with 19 year olds in eighth grade, and that uh, made you more mature. Yeah, it was like family friends and stuff like that, but it wasn't anything like it wasn't like every single time I was with them. But it was like every now and then I'd take a hit or two, and it would just. But even being around them, it wouldn't just. You know what I mean? Being around an older crowd of people kind of made me think older than I was at the time. Well, Braden, uh, all right, so you've got some good perspective on the past here. Uh, before we go, what's next for you, Braden, in your in your I don't know. That was another life. reason I was. That was another reason I was calling in. I'm not trying to hold you up too long, but like, I don't necessarily know where to go next. Well, it sounds like you're operating off of, uh, at least the sense I get from you, is you're operating through life from this place of, uh, you know, I had my heart broken, I had my balls broken, I've been um, hanging out with older people all my life, you know, this, that, the other thing, I've experienced some pain, some pleasure, uh, I'm ready for what's next, that's, that's at least uh, what I get from you. So, uh, yeah, I just figured you know, I'm, not, I'm not too is, worried to about whatever comes strong. next. I appreciate as long that, as you man. Continue to and, have uh, that mindset. I'd also, one thing I would like to say before I go is, um, I really appreciate you and your team being so open and friendly. All the call screeners oh, and you, you just being down to earth and everything. It's really refreshing to see there's people left in the earth like that. And I appreciate that very much, Braden. Uh, thank you for letting me call you by. The right name. And uh, I hope that you no have problem. a good rest of the evening. You have a great one, man. It is through adversity, particularly adversity in the genitals, that we grow stronger to conquer further adversity later down the line in our lives, especially further adversity in the genitals. Because, uh, Braden, he's probably going to wake up one day at 42 with his right ball just, like, tucked in his elbow or something, and he'll be ready for that day. When that happens to me, I'm freaking out. I'm panicking. I'm I'm they're going to have to cut mine off because I won't respond in a calm collected manner in a way that Braden would. So so I'm not worried about him. Let's talk to Armando. Hello. Hello. Uh, is this the Gek? Is this Armando? It is. How are you, Armando? 
I'm all right. I'm tired, to say the least. Uh, yeah. What do you What do you been uh doing all day that's made you so tired? Uh, well, working. I've been helping my mother out. She's building a new back patio now that the spring's rolling around. And now I'm currently at work right now myself. Oh, you're at work right now? Yeah. Job's fairly what? easy, though, so. Are you, where, are you like, on break or something? Or um, are you, who's paying you to talk to no, a gecko right I'm doing now? Oh, my boss. No, no, I'm, I'm moving boxes around right now. Okay, oh, what are you at, like, an I'm Amazon picking warehouse? Picking up boxes, putting them down. No, Kroger. Crow, oh, Crow, Crow are your stock boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. I can hear it yeah, in the background. I can I hear do it at the, night. The boxes. You can? Are they pleasant or no? I could make them stop. Uh, well, I, I would ask you to make them stop, but then I feel like you're going to get yelled at. No, no, no. All right. Well, listen, uh, Armando, it says here you're 18 years old from Michigan. Um, mm-hmm. It says your mom is a Instagram influencer who is looking to start an OnlyFans. Uh, she's trying to she convince is. you that it's a good idea, uh, but you're not quite sure. It also says here no. the call screener made a note and they said, be sure to ask him about the peanut butter feet pictures. Don't let me forget about that. Yeah. But let's save that for the. Don't we, we'll get there. We'll get. Don't don't jump to it. We'll get there. But let's start with this. Um, okay. T- does is this all accurate? First of all. Yeah. So far. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, what are your thoughts on this? I'm nervous to say the least. I'm not a hundred percent against, but I'm nervous. Uh, in what I, way are you nervous? I'm scared of the repercussions to me and who might, you know, see it. You know, it's going to be out there on the internet. You know, I was raised to believe what's on the internet never disappears, you know? That's true. I'm a little bit scared um, of that. What repercussions are you afraid of to, to yourself? I, uh, you know, I'm going to sound a little self-centered. Go but just a little bit of embarrassment, you know? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm scared to be embarrassed. Mm-hmm. I and, and, and whatever she might post on there is, you know, kind of directly or indirectly linked to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, At least that's how I feel. Sure, sure, sure. You're embarrassed of, like, uh, what your friend's finding out and, like, fucking sending you the pictures and, mm-hmm. you know, all that stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, and you know it's not it's not every day that my mom you know decides hey let me just start you know some soft core you know stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, um, are you worried at? Okay, is that is that the extent of uh of of your worries? Is just repercussions about embarrassment? Is there anything yeah, else about it that's I bothering you? I would say you? so. Okay. That that. That and you know, it just it just doesn't feel like a right occupation. I don't know, nothing against those people, you know, but I, I just I just feel like she she shouldn't do it. I don't think it's right for her, you know. Okay. And maybe that's just me being the son, but I I don't think it's right for her, and especially with how long I've known her and what she her personality is like. I don't know. No. What, tell me what it is about her, her, her personality that you think is antithetical to her doing, doing OnlyFans. She's very blunt on the internet, too. So, like, she's been banned from uh, certain social medias multiple times and had multiple day bans and stuff. And she is, she's uh, quite the character, too. She dresses very... Uh, goth and emo and almost pixie-ish if I were to describe it too. Sure. She 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 wears all the bright colors, dark colors, you know, stuff like that. And it, I don't know. 
Um, I'm worried she would get, you know, in some form of trouble on the internet or, mm. or something she'd regret. Well, it says that you're. It, it says here that she's an Instagram influencer. What? Okay, so what kinds of uh, Instagram content is she currently known for? Uh, she's she's getting up there. I wouldn't say she's quite influencer yet. Well, r- whether there. whether or not you know, for, forgetting about like audience size, like what what is she posting about already? Mm-hmm. Uh, herself makeup. A lot about my cats, our cats. Um, a lot of clothing, and you know whatever she finds appealing to herself too. Like she'll post uh, cute little artwork, some creepy artwork. You know whatever stuff she'll draw. And you know she'll post herself in an outfit with some makeup on, doing a look or something. Mm. Mm, okay. But um, and she's she's very good at it too. Sure. So that's why I'm on the fence too, because I believe if she did do it and she did it right, she could do very well. And that's another theory that she does do very well. That's a lot of attention. Sure. Sure. Um, what's your relationship like with your mom? Wonderful. I love her to death. That's I. Great. I'd say she's one of the closest people to me. Mm. Mm. Well, you know, Armando, uh, here's what I'll say. is, uh, And I don't know if I'm going to tell you anything you don't already know. But, like, <laughs> your mom... Here's the thing. You're 18 years old. Um, <laughs> your mom is her own independent adult person who, uh, similar to how if, if you were to make some sort of decision with your life, I would tell you that your mom's opinion on the decision that you make with your life is irrelevant, you know, because it's your life and you're the one that has to live it and your mom can't influence you and shouldn't influence you. I would say the same thing right back. You know, your mom's her own person. Uh, she's living her own life, and uh, there's 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 really nothing that you can do about that, um, except uh, you know, as as you're saying that you you're you're very close with her, that you love her, and you know you guys have a great relationship. All you can kind of really do is uh, you know be supportive of her and be there for her. Uh, you know, it be I I think it'd be one thing if you had like. You know, whatever genuine concerns for like her safety uh, that that you wanted to air yeah. to her, you know. But at, at the end of the day, uh, you just ha- you have to just embrace it, whatever she decides to do with her life, because yeah. it's not a, it's not up to you. Uh, just in the same just in the same you know, way that you wouldn't want her telling you what you can and can't do with your life. Right. Now, how do you, you know, feel about I, that? I was starting to, you know, I am, I am leaning more towards that, and I, I do honestly believe that is the right thing to do, and I think it's probably what I'll end up doing. I just got to get over these, you know, internal fears and anxieties over, you know, what's going to happen. Not even to me, but to her. Sure. So I guess if she's prepared for it, I should, you know, just embrace that and be like, okay, you know, do what you want. It, see, I mean, it's funny because it's it, this really is like I'm really looking at this uh, from the flip side as well. Like, if, as if, if the roles were reversed, it feels very much like a similar situation um, where, like, yeah. again, if you were to go do OnlyFans, do porn, do whatever thing with your life that your mom disapproves of, it's like uh, you know uh, uh, her intentions, as your intentions, would be for you to be safe, for you to you know be, be well. What did you say? Oh, oh no, sorry, I'm sorry. interrupting you talking to a person about your job. No, no, you're not. Um, I forget what I was saying, but uh, either way, uh, I, I, I think that you have to Im- just embrace the fact that uh, no part of the situation is is within your control. Um, or is, is dependent on any sort of input from you, just as. 
you would want to have the agency away from your mom to make your own decisions with your life. Yeah. No, I completely agree, and I, I think, I think that's how I, I, I do feel deep down. I do feel like you know she can make her own choices, and she definitely is able to, and I believe she is, you know. And also, she's not even sure what type of content she would like to post, you know. Well, listen. And now that that's all out of the way. Is, oh no! Go ahead. Hit me with the other thing. No, that was basically. She doesn't even know what she would want to post. She was running ideas through me, and she actually wanted to get some suggestions from you. Like, what would, what do you think, would be the market? <laughs> okay, I'll say this: uh, your mom's your own person. Blah, blah blah. All that stuff I said. Uh, if, if 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 I were you and I were uncomfortable with being a part of the creative process of your mom's OnlyFans, I would understand that feeling. Uh, it's a very valid feeling to not want to be involved in that creative process. Yeah. Um. But I mean, okay. What, on you, the really quick. Side, though, I'm... Uh, now I feel like now is a good time to ask about the peanut butter pictures. What is that? Yeah, that was one of the ideas she was running through me. Was so there apparently there's one chick on there right now who is selling peanut butter free pictures. Okay. And uh, she has about you know five thousand subs, each ten dollars each, making that's about fifty thousand a year. That's yeah. pretty good money. And she was running that through me, saying, "Hey, that's a." Uh, that's a market there. Okay, how do you feel when your mom you know, is I running... How do you feel when your mom is running uh, creative ideas for her OnlyFans, by the way? You know, not terrible, I guess. Like, it's, I'm used to it at this point. I would say. Hmm. But also, deep down, it's a little weird. Well, uh... Listen, Armando, um, you know, look, good luck to you with whatever it is that uh, you do in your life. Um, I'm glad to hear that you have a good relationship with your mom. That's a, that's, that's a beautiful thing. Uh, if you ever do feel uncomfortable with her running uh, uh, content ideas by you, um, you should feel free to, to let her know that. <laughs> you can be like, hey, listen, mom, I support your decision to do OnlyFans, um, but I would like to have uh, no personal involvement in that whatsoever. Yeah, I've I've honestly she she's she's raised me pretty weird. I'd say she's always been a unique but great mother. Mm-hmm. So I think you know now with all the jokes she's cracked, me being younger and stuff, I think now it's just partly partly used to it. Uh, Armando, like said, is there anything you always, want to say to? She's always been a character. Is there anything you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Uh, no, not that I can say. Oh, other than I love you. Thank you for calling, Armando. Good so luck much. You at the Kroger. Yeah, no problem. Me too. I like really want to know what his mom's OnlyFans is, but I'm, I wasn't gonna ask him. Because that's just, that's just not cool. That's just not a thing you can really ask people. You really can't politely ask somebody uh, the link to their mom's OnlyFans. You have to go find that independently. Spencer? Hello, Gek. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? Um... I'm hanging out. I'm a little, um, I think I'm a little brain fogged, but, you know, I'm trying my best oh, to, why uh, that be a person. Oh, you know, I don't know. It's probably just chemicals. You know, everyone's like trying to figure yeah. out how to be, you know, it's all, it's, it's all chemicals. What's going on with you? Yeah, man. Uh, I'm, I'm doing good. Just hanging out. Um, Spencer, it says here that you're obsessed with minions. Yes. Yes. Uh, um, tell me about that. So yeah, it, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll elaborate on it. Um, I I just started like, like, 
I watched the movies and stuff, and I thought they were good. But then, like, just minions started to pop up, like, everywhere. Mm. Like, even at, like, Walmart and stuff. So, like, I would just buy everything. And now, and I'm, now you I'm have a genuine judge for it. You have a genuine uh, affinity for the minions. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Mm. It, it's it's really bizarre. Well, it's like, true that... I'm kind of self-conscious that, about it, too. Why? Well, why are you self-conscious about it? You know, it started off as a joke, but now I think people are realizing that, like, this isn't a joke anymore, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, well, so why are you ashamed, then, to like what you like? You know, I, I, I really don't know. Mm-hmm. But, like, I don't wear my Minions t-shirt in public too much, you know? Do you I wish that you... Do you wish that you had the courage to wear your Minions t-shirt in public? In public? Yeah, all the time. Yeah. Hmm. When's the last time you wore your Minions I'm... t-shirt in public? It, it had to have been like two months ago. And I like, I don't know, I, I, I'm like looking around and stuff, and I can see that people are, you know, looking at me, you know? Hmm. And it's a shame, you know? Um, you know, man, I feel like you shouldn't be ashamed to like the minions because, uh, look, these are little green guy. What, what are they? They're yellow. These little, these little yellow guys. Yeah, they're yellow. They're, they exist because people find value in them. That's why the franchise is, is worth millions of dollars. And if the people around you cannot find value in the minions, then that is due to a fault in their own perception. Or, if not a fault, um, a difference in their perception than in yours. And if the world were made of people who all have the same perception then it would be a very very boring world I agree so you should wear the minions t-shirt yeah I'm I'm not quite there yet but I, I'm hoping I will get there you know mm-hmm. what do you think would get you there I I honestly don't know because now it's becoming like less trendy and, like, you see less and less Minion stuff out there. So, now I feel like, it's a little weirder now to start wearing it. Like, I feel like I'm... Well, wait a minute. Well, wait, 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 a minute. Are you wearing this stuff because you genuinely like the Minions? Or because it's, as you say, trendy? Oh, it's definitely not, like... I, I meant trendy in the way of, like, it's just everywhere, like, at Walmart and stuff. I don't really think it's really trendy to wear minion stuff, you know? Not yet, at least. Hmm. Um, well, then, I feel like it's on. It's the onus could be on you, Spencer, to start the trend. I'm, I'm really hoping to. I, I think I'll, I'll, I will start going for it. Okay, good. Good. Yeah. That's 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 what, I, that's, that's what I needed to hear. That's what I want from you, Spencer. That's what I want from you is to start the trend. You know. You know. Because I, 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 Spencer, I I I just can hear from you that that y- you're you're going along with the whims of wherever other people are are going and and doing. You know, um, and and that can only last you for so long until you need to until you need to break free from the chains Spencer yes yes. break free from the chains and start following your own path whatever that looks like yeah that's you know that's exactly what I wanted like needed to hear you know I appreciate it of course 
Thank you for calling, Spencer. No problem. Have a good one. Hello? Hello? Uh, hi. Hi. This is Gek, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, who am, I, who am I speaking with? Oh, my name is Paloma. Paloma. Paloma, it's nice to talk to you. I normally uh, screen the calls before uh, talking to them, so I have an idea of what people want to talk about. Um, but mm-hmm. I, decided, I decided to go in raw with this one. Cool. Do you have a topic that you want to talk about, or do you want? I was just topic? about to ask you, Paloma, if you had a topic that you wanted to talk about. Um. Yeah. So my mom is convinced that she has visions, and she has I want visions. to unpack that. Oh, like yeah, um, vision. like supernatural visions. Yeah. Okay. What like what kind of supernatural visions? Interesting of the future. Well, okay, so tell me what your mom. Tell me what your mom sees when she looks into the future. Um, she is convinced that I'm gonna have two children one day, and that I'm gonna fall in love when I'm older. I don't know. My sister says that she usually gets stuff with her correct. So I'm like, is this gonna be my future? I don't know. I'm not fully convinced. Hmm. Um, okay, do you believe in uh, this sort of woo-woo, clairvoyance sort of stuff, or are you are you skeptical? I'm very skeptical. Okay. Um, and does let me ask you, does these visions that your mom claimed to have do they in any way affect your relationship with her? Um, honestly, a little bit. Not in the sense that she's saying anything wrong, just in the sense that I'm kind of worried for her, you know? Why are you worried for her? Because I feel like she she's really into like crystals and um, tuning forks and just all things mystic. Sure. And I think she is putting herself in this into this world so much because she's avoiding something or mm. she doesn't know what either the truth is and she's just scared of something i'm not sure i you see it's interesting to hear you say this because you could kind of say that about a lot of things you could say that about religion mm-hmm. you could say that about following a football team you could say that about working mm-hmm. you got I me mean, you said that and you could say that about anything that you're using it as a distraction for uh you know whatever's underneath mm-hmm. i think i'm more partial because me and my mom are ex-mormons my dad and sister mm. are still mormons but i i just don't believe in anything religious or skeptical because I think it's just like um, keeping you from the truth of the matter of the world, you know? But mm. I think it's more cut and dry than um, what people think, believe. Well, what do you believe is the truth of the matter of the world? Hmm. I think we live and we try our best and we die. Okay. Do you, so do you think that your mom is avoiding that? I think so. So, well, here's the thing. is I, I don't know if you need to be concerned with your mom, because luckily for you, luckily for her, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of people have lived healthy, fine lives believing their entire time in some crazy shit. So, Mm -hmm. you know, unless if she's joining some sort of suicide doom cult. (laughs) uh, No, I hope not. (laughs) It it sounds like her her safety is um, in order. And when you're talking about, oh, she's uh, doing certain things to avoid looking at certain truths, 
it's like, well, you know who's also doing that is uh, uh, almost every human being alive. What do you think I'm doing here on Twitch talking to people in a gecko costume? I mean, you do have a point. We're all just distracting ourselves. It's true. Still, for some, from something. Yeah, so I mean, look, your, mom has a, your mom's got a thing. It's the same. It, I, I, I wouldn't look yeah. at her believing in, in crystals and shit as anything, you know, uh, more than, you know, like, is any different from her just joining a book club or something like that, you know? It's just another thing mm -hmm. to distract herself from, from uh, Forever Empty. I guess I never really thought of it like that because me and my friends are just like, this is so strange and so foreign to us that it's just, just so weird. I'm sure that you and your friends do and say a lot of things that your mom probably looks at and goes, this is very strange and foreign to me. Mm -hmm. Probably. <laughs> um, but I mean, look, at the end, I think it's glad that you're concerned for your mom. It means that you give a shit. But she'll probably be fine. Again, unless if she's joining some sort of weird death cult or if she starts, like, protesting at abortion clinics or anything weird like that, she's probably fine. Yeah, no. She hasn't gotten to that point yet. Uh, What did you say her name was? Paloma? That's a good name. Is there anything else you want to say to the computer, yeah. Paloma? Um, oh, I do have a question. Hit me. Are you are you gonna do Gek Date still? Because I loved those. Uh, I want to do Gek Date. It's just a lot of like work to curate, and I don't have the time to do that right now. Mm -hmm. But eventually, I will. Maybe. Awesome. Possibly. Thank you for calling, Paloma. All right, love you, Gek. Ooh. Ooh.